Welcome to Action Figure Evolution, where I chronicle the history of one character in action figure form. This series is a tribute to the late, great Glenn Webb, who we tragically lost in 2016. Glenn Webb was my introduction to the world of action figure reviewers, and he inspired me to want to review figures too. If you're a newer collector, or maybe just never heard of him, definitely check him out. But today, we're going to be digging into my favorite superhero, Spider-Man. Before we begin, I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. There are probably more action figures of Spider-Man than any fictional character ever created, save for maybe Batman. So we're gonna keep things simple and set some parameters. First of all, we will only be looking at versions of Spider-Man in his classic red and blue costume. Also, no imports and no cloth costumes. So that pretty much means no Mezco, no Mafex, no Hot Toys. We're just gonna be looking at action figures that the average consumer would be able to pick up. And lastly, we're not going to be looking at any toys meant for little, little kids. Obviously, we're not going to look at every single classic Spider-Man figure ever made, but we will cover just enough of the highlights so that you can witness action figure evolution. Strictly speaking, Spider-Man's action figure journey began with Mego, but for most of us, the dawn of his action figure evolution can be traced back to 1984 with Mattel's Secret Wars. He stands at just four inches tall and features just five points of articulation. Spoiler alert, that's where I got the name of the show from. The web detail is minimal and it's tampoed on the front and back. You can definitely see where they missed in the middle, as well as a few other places. The next time that Spider-Man would be gracing toy store shelves would be in 1990 with Toy Biz's Marvel Super Hero Collection. We get a pretty nice picture of Spider-Man dominating the card, and a big ol' action blurb telling us that he comes with web suction hands. Mine comes with the original price tag. Oh, and hey kids, you can also get 50% off Marvel Comics subscriptions. Nine issues for $4.50! These days, you can barely get one comic for that! Getting him out of the package, and he stands at four and three quarters inches. Just like Secret Wars, you'll notice that the webs are all painted on, but unlike Secret Wars, we don't have any gaps. We did, however, get two new points of articulation, as well as these hideous suction cups hands. They work like so. As a kid, I really didn't like them and actually tore mine off. And to be honest, I just kind of preferred the Secret Wars version. But then 1992 came along and both Spider-Man and Toy Biz made a huge leap forward. This is the very first super posable Spider-Man action figure. Hmm, six issues for five dollars? That's a pretty big price hike for only two years. And speaking of price hikes, this one went for $4.94 at Kmart. Not only can the head turn, it can even tilt, swivel hinge shoulders, sink single jointed elbow, wrist hinge, a diaphragm, waist swivel, ball jointed hips, single jointed knees, and ankle hinge. With the exception of those ugly metal joints, I think that this figure honestly could have even been released today and would still have been able to hold its own, especially when you compare it to that sucker hand Spider-Man that they had released just two years prior. But then came 1994 and the release of the Spider-Man animated series. Here we have the web parachute Spider-Man. Unlike the superposable Spider-Man that we just looked at, this one's a little bit bulkier, but that does does actually reflect how he looked on the series. The articulation is a fair bit scaled back, but he does still have swivel hinge shoulders. He's also a fair amount bigger, standing at five inches exactly. And then in 1995, the animated series Spider-Man would get his own superposable version. This one also has a ball in the neck, swivel hinge shoulders, single jointed elbow, hinged wrist, a diaphragm joint, waist swivel, ball jointed hips, single jointed knees, and ankle hinge. The original superposable version did a slightly better job of integrating both sculpt and posability, but the 1995 version is still a great step along the way in what would eventually become the gold standard. In 1996, Toy Biz released their final wave of Spider-Man figures under the animated series banner. From then on out, it was all spider wars and web traps and electro sparks and the like. They did, however, give us this new leaner Spider-Man buck. And not only did they finally switch out those hideous metal joints for plastic ones, they also incorporated ankle hinges as part of their normal articulation. This particular figure is called Octo Spidey and originally came with some Dr. Octopus tentacles, but you can best be sure that they definitely got their money's worth out of this mold. As soon as Octo Spidey came out, it quickly became my favorite Spider-Man figure. The leaner proportions simply seem more in line with what I saw coming off of the comic book page. In 1997, Toy Biz released Web Trap Spider-Man, which represented another leap forward for the character. Gone were the tampoed on webs, and in its place were etched in webbings that received a black wash to bring out all that detail. The unfortunate trade-off was a lack of arm articulation, and a sculpt that, while dynamic, kept him in this 
permanently sculpted pose. They released a lot of variants of this body, including this alternate version with a Peter Parker head. This figure also added a little bit of height, nudging us ever so closer to the 6 inch scale. In 1998, Toy Biz decided to combine the best of both worlds with this Spider-Man from the Spider and the Scarecrow gift pack. This figure features the Octo Spider-Man body, but has those etched in webs and black wash from the web trap. It also included a wrist swivel as an extra point of articulation. I always found this figure to be a little bit too dark and grimy for my taste. I tried to go in and paint my own webbing on this version that came with the playset. And to be honest, for 17 years old, I actually wasn't doing half bad of a job. Painted webs instead of etched in ones would return, however, in 1998 with the release of this figure. The body was used many times in many different waves, but made its first appearance in the Bug Buster series. He has that V-shaped torso from the Web Trap Spider-Man, but he also features a return to swivel hinge shoulders and elbow articulation. Also, unlike the Web Trap, which came with two open hands, this version has one open hand and a fist. Dylan, you son of a bitch! If anything, it seems more like a natural evolution of Octo Spidey. The next major leap forward would come in 1999 with Toy Biz's Spider-Man Spider Power series. This is the Spider Sense Spider-Man. Oh, and if the eyes look weird, it's because I painted them in myself. The eyes were originally a transparent plastic and would light up with the flip of this switch. Not only does this figure perfectly capture the artwork of Mike Waringo, it also standardizes bald jointed hips. That progress was lost the very same year in the next assortment of Spider Power figures with the flip and swing Spider-Man. Not only is the webbing too dark and grimy like the Spider in the Scarecrow 2 pack, but we also lost most of our arm articulation, keeping him permanently frozen looking like the Frankenstein monster. Urgh. Brains. Urgh. This figure is, however, important for another reason, as it represents the very last 5-inch scale figure that we're going to be looking at from Toy Biz. After this, things would never be the same. And don't worry, I know that you want to see it just as much as I want to do it. Boop. Eh. Fun. In the year 2000, Toy Biz transformed the action figure industry forever with the release of Spider-Man Classics. This was a 6-inch figure helping to redefine that scale as the new standard. He had a ball joint in his head, swivel at the base of the neck, swivel hinge arms, pinless double-jointed elbows, a swivel in the forearm, and a hinge at the wrist, diaphragm joint, swivel at the waist, ball jointed hips, thigh cut, pinless double-jointed knees, boot cut, hinge at the ankle, and toe tick. Not only that, but he also featured separate articulation in his fingers, allowing him to thwip. And if that wasn't enough, he also included a very unique display base that allowed you to hang him on the wall like a work of art. Obviously, this wasn't the first superposable Spider-Man. More importantly, it was this figure that made that level of superposability the industry standard. But then something happened that would change Spider-Man, action figures, and superhero media forever. The release of the very first Spider-Man movie in 2002. Instead of being etched in, we have raised webbing that's beautifully painted silver. It also features intricate texturing. And in addition to all the different points of articulation that the 2000 Spider-Man introduced, this one introduces bicep swivel and ankle pivot. And similar to Spider-Man Classic, he also got his own wall hanging display base. Seriously, you could slip him into your current Marvel Legends and he would look just fine. Don't believe me? Here he is side by side Black Widow from Captain America the Winter Soldier. I know she's a weird choice, but this is the only MCU figure I have, so sue me. Hmm, don't mind if I do. But then by 2003, we were back to this. This is Rocket Launch Spider-Man from Series 6 of the 2000 series. He came with a rocket launcher on his back that I summarily ripped off. I guess I'm always just mutilating my Spider-Mans. He features a return to painted on webbings, which at the time I thought was a very refreshing change of pace. Gone are the ball jointed hips or double jointed knees, but he still had swivel hinge shoulders, a bicep swivel that looks more like what we're used to today, double jointed elbows, swivel and hinge, finger articulation, swivel waist, and ankle hinge. But we'd see a return to more articulation and more detailing in the following wave, 2003's Series 7 Peter Parker Spider-Man. It was called Peter Parker. Parker Spider-Man because it came with this alternate Peter Parker head. It also came with a spring-loaded waist. Using that waist, he could deliver powerful kicks or he could backhand opponents like the Michael Keaton Batman. This figure saw a return to double-jointed knees, boot cut, and toe articulation, but unfortunately it also gave us these hideous ball-jointed hips, which sadly became the standard for Toy Biz-era Marvel Legends. And speaking of Marvel Legends, in 2004, Toy Biz released the Marvel Legends Sinister Six box set, and with it, this abomination. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot to appreciate about this figure, and I'm sure that there are those of you out there that this is probably your favorite. But there's also just a lot of baffling 
following choices that were made. Let's start with the articulation. In addition to the swivel hinge shoulders, Toybiz decided to add two different butterfly joints. One moved back, and the other moved up, resulting in this monstrosity. Hello in there! Utilizing both of those arms, and he looks more like Spider-Man from Marvel Zombies. On top of that, his costume is just way over-textured. The result is that he looks kind of craggy and burnt. The articulation is also very floppy, and more often than not, he's left looking like this. During this time, Diamond Toys launched their own collection of figures called Marvel Select. These 7-inch scale figures had limited posability and were sold to the direct market. Although they did offer a Spider-Man figure early on based off of his ultimate appearance, more often than not, they would find ways of slipping Spider-Man and other figures as an accessory. For example, here he is with Ultimate Venom. Here he is taking a little sneaky peek at the Black Cat. Spinning it around, it really is a pretty cool display base. And to be honest, it kind of reminds me of the old logo for Marvel Productions. And lastly, here he is in the clutches of the Green Goblin. Fortunately, in 2005, Toy Biz released another box set featuring Spider-Man and his fearsome foes. Although it features a different head, the body for this Spider-Man comes from the fabled McFarlane Spider-Man. That Spider-Man is the most highly sought after after single carded Spider-Man figure ever made. On eBay or at toy conventions, it can go anywhere up to $500. Dollars. And that's not to say this is a perfect figure. For one thing, the shoulder detail is very prone to wearing out. Once again, the black wash makes him look dirty and grimy. The ball jointed hips again are pretty ugly. And to my eye, he's just a little too gangly. On the literal other hand, each one of his fingers are independently articulated, so I guess you could have some fun with that. Toy Biz did release a single carded Spider-Man as part of its Marvel Legends series, but this figure is based off of his black and red costume from Amazing Fantasy 15 rather than his classic red and blue, so I'm not really going to be going into it here. For all intents and purposes, this is the final classic Spider-Man figure ever made by Toy Biz, marking the end of an era. These are the toys that changed the action figure industry. They innovated action figure engineering and set the standard for scale and posability. Tragically, as the baton passed from Toy Biz to Hasbro, Marvel toys would enter a dark age. At first, Hasbro would capitalize on molds they acquired from Toy Biz by releasing a series of repaints, but soon, six-inch figures would fade away, replaced by three and three quarter inch figures. Lo and behold, in 2010, Marvel Select delivered. It featured etched in webbing with a black paint wash similar to some of the higher end Toy Biz ones, and yet the blues remained clean and vibrant. It wasn't quite as poseable as we were used to, but it was the best we'd gotten in years. By 2015, Hasbro finally hit their stride and delivered what many people consider the very best Spider-Man ever made, Pizza Spidey. He's called Pizza Spidey because he comes with a gooey slice and a partially unmasked head so that he can enjoy it. With nice clean paint painted on webbings, Pizza Spidey had all the articulation we could ever want and more. Ball jointed head on a disc hinge, butterfly joints that don't create ugly crater armpits, a nice tight ab crunch, swivel waist, ball jointed hips, thigh cut, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, swivel hinge wrists, and no ugly finger joints, double jointed knees, and ankles that hinge and pivot. In just this one frame, we can see a progression spanning 31 years. One year later, in 2016, Marvel Select struck back giving us the Spectacular Spider-Man. Standing at 7 inches, the Spectacular Spider-Man towers over Pizza Spidey, and yet they're so similar that when you put them side by side, you get the impression that they were both sculpted by the same person. Aside from a couple of points of articulation, the main difference are the etched-in webs. Putting the Spectacular Spider-Man side by side the previous Marvel Select, and there is absolutely no contest. He comes with a pair of thwip hands, a pair of wall-crawling hands, a pair of fists, and a pair of holding hands. Using those hands, he can hold a Spider-Man mask except Accessory, which goes perfectly with his alternate Peter Parker head. Just like Pizza Spidey, you can really appreciate the progression. In 2020, Hasbro released a new classic Spider-Man as part of their retro card line. This Spider-Man reminds me a lot more of what he looked like back in the 70s and 80s. And unlike Pizza Spidey, he has boot cut rotation. Instead of a regular ab crunch, he has a diaphragm joint. But then looking down, instead of a waist cut, he actually has a reverse ab crunch. So instead of being cut here, pointing up, it's cut here, pointing down. Using both the diaphragm cut and the reverse ab crunch, he can hunch over that far and arch back that far. This is actually the first bit of new articulation engineering that we've seen in a Spider-Man figure in a very long time. Putting them side by side and I think that it really comes down to personal preference. Lining them up and this is the progression that got us to where we are today. If I had to break it down to the most important figures, it would probably be these six. But this is not the end of the story. There's one final figure that I want to look at. The new Marvel Legends Kenner Tribute Series. The figure stands at three and three quarters inches and features seven points of articulation, including the head, the shoulders, the forearms, and legs that kick out. Even though Kenner never made Marvel figures, it still harkens back to olden days of secret
secret wars, reminding us that we always come full circle no matter how much we've evolved. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the evolution of Spider-Man in action figure form. If you liked this video, please do me a favor and give it a like. I put a lot of work into this, and your likes help more people to see it. While you're down there, sound off in the comments and let me know what other characters you'd like to see. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.